Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to go through an implementation of Layer 2.2 Point Point VPN over MPLS, or also known as Virtual Private Wire Service. Since Layer 2 web technologies like Frame Relay and ATM have become much less common, we're just going to focus on Ethernet. So some of the topics that we're going to be covering for Ethernet over MPLS includes a port mode with no VLAN, port mode with VLAN tacking, VLAN mode, and we're also going to look at VLAN translation. We will be utilizing GNS3 in this lab, and for our physical lab topology, we have nine routers, R1 through R9, with the router R2, 3, 4, and 5 connected over a zero point to point links with any other router pretty much connected back to back as shown as the straight solid line in this diagram. Okay, for our layer 3 topologies we have our router R1 through R5 that make up our core MPLS with our 1, 2, and 4 being a PE router and our 3 and 5 being the P routers. So our router R6, R7, R8, and R9 that's the routers that we're going to try to provide layer 2 connectivity for. So the whole concept is very similar to the MPLS VPN where you have two labels being used on the packet with the top label that gets you from ingress to egress router and, and the bottom label that's used to forward the packet to the final destination. But the main difference is lies under the label exchange. So instead of using the MPBGP to exchange the labels between the PE routers in the layer two VPN, the technology actually leveraged the targeted LDP. If you remember, we have already discussed targeted LDP in the previous videos. As by default, LDP is a local protocol that's used a multicast address to discover adjacent neighbors. But with the targeted LDP, it's actually used a UDP and TCP in combinations in order to perform the neighbor discovery and label exchange across multiple hops. As shown in this green line right here, so it will be building a targeted LDP as we configure the pseudo wire command between the PE routers. So here we're just showing a targeted LDP session between R1 and R2. Okay, in this lab, we have three different scenarios, but instead of going through each one of them right now, we're just gonna wait until we get to the particular task and then we'll come back and reference this particular diagram. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first scenario with port mode and no VLAN. So we need to configure R6 and R7 interfaces with the following IP addresses. And this is our R6 fast 00 interface with the IP 67.6. .6, and then for R7 is 67.7. Actually, let me bring up the scenario one diagram. So right here we have our R6 and R7 with our PE routers. R1, R2 is in the middle. And then we're going to try to provide connectivity. As you can see, the IP of the R6 fast 00 interface and R7 fast 00 interface are actually on the same subnet. So we're going to try to build a layer two reachability. Again, this is uh, only point to point. Okay, so that is what's for the interface configuration. And then we need to configure MPLS layer two VPN or Ethernet over MPLS between R1 and R2 with the pseudo wire ID of 100 to provide connectivity between the two routers. And as we saw in the diagram, and then we had to verify the connectivity as well as perform a packet captures on R1 MPLS interface. And we're going to review the packets for the tunnel setup and data just to get a better understanding of what's actually going on under the hood. Okay, so and it's a smart shark right here that we're going to do a packet capture on the R1 interface. Okay, so let's proceed with our configuration from left to right. So first we're going to configure R6 fast 0, 0. So let's get over to R6, interface fast 00, zero. IP address 162.16.67.6. Okay, slash 24. That should be all we need. Next, we need to configure pseudo wire on R1, and this is accomplished through a command call cross connect or X connect. And that's going to be configured on the interface that's facing the CE routers. And that's where all the packets are going to be coming in. So in this case, it's going to be a fast 00. zero. So as soon as the packet comes into the interface, it will be placed into the VPN tunnel, if you will. But first, we need to build that targeted LDP we talked about between R1 and R2. So on the R1 side, interface fast 00, zero 
we use the command cross connect and then we need to specify the IP of the peer. In this case is R2. We can always use the loopback interface of R2 followed by the pseudo YID or it's also called a virtual circuit of VCID. That would be 100. In your question mark, you have two options here. One is to just go ahead and specify encapsulation or you can create a pseudo wire class which we will look at in a later task. You know, just keep things simple. We're just going to use encapsulations. And since the technology can run over where there's L2TP version 3, and that's when you have the transport network in the middle being an IP network. But for us, we have our MPLS being our transport network. So we have to specify MPLS. And then with that additional option, we can just hit enter. Yeah, as you can see, when you, once you hit enter, it kind of puts you into the cross connect sub mode that you can additionally configure like a backup pseudo wire which we would not do right now. So in order to complete the configuration, make sure you type exit. Otherwise, it would not try to bring up the pseudo wire. Okay, so now we kind of complete the first half of the configuration. Let me kind of get the Wireshark ready so that when it, we complete the other side, it was trying to bring up the target LDP and we can see all the transactions. So let me bring up Wireshark. Okay, right here, I'm just going to leave it running in the background while we complete the configuration on the right hand side, which is starting at R2 interface fast. Let me look, that would be our one zero. Same thing with the cross connect command pointing back to R1, pseudo ID 100 with the encapsulation of MPLS. And don't forget to exit. So you can see as soon as I type exit, you can see some SYN and SYNAC that's part of LDP. We'll come back and take a look at that. So let me kind of stop that for now. And then let's go ahead and complete the IP configuration on the R7 interface FAST00 IP address 172.16.67.7. Okay, no shut, just to make sure. Okay, so if you go back, I didn't quite uh, show you this, but on R2, you can see that once we complete the cross connect command and exit, our LDP neighbor adjacency came up and it's just pointing back to R1. So let's do some show command on R1 that's related to L2 VPN. So first let's do show MPLS with the question mark. Right here, there's an option for L2 transport and that's what pretty much what we're dealing with right now. So L2 transport, let's kind of go through that. The Probably the easiest command is the VC, so we can check the status of all the virtual circuit that's running currently. So you can see that off the interface fast in 00, we have a local circuit type Ethernet. So if you were to have a different type of layer 2 circuit, like HDLC, PPP, frame relay, or ATM, it will say so right here. And then the destination is our router R2 with the VCID of 100, and our current status for that VC is up. Okay, we can check the binding, which has got to do with the label that's been exchanged between the two PE routers. So for this particular VC, you see the local label for this is 25, and the remote label that's received as part of the targeted LDP is 26. So make a quick note of that. We will look at the packet captured in a little bit, and we're going to try to find that where exactly are these labels located in those packets. Okay, you got MTU information also. And we can look at the show MPLS L2 transport summary. And here it gives you a counts for all the VCs that we have with different status. So right now we have currently one VC that's up and active. And that's located of the MPLS interface 1 slash 0. Okay, and we can do another show command VC, uh, say detail. So this gives you a detailed breakdown of the VC. So obviously destination, ID, status. Next top address is our router R3. Signaling protocols LDP. You can see as uh, specified right here is a targeted LDP, as well as the local and remote labels and a bunch of other information as well that might not be as uh, much of interest to us. Just to show you those commands are available right there. So another command that you can do is, oh, and one more thing I want to show right here is the label stack for getting that packet across. So we know the remote packet for the VC is 26, and then the transport label is 19. Okay, and that's the top label. 
Another command you can do is show L2 VPN service cross connect all your detail. Okay, you pretty much get the similar information with a little different output format, but what we also have here is the information related to the inner working, which we will discuss in our later videos. And what shows here is kind of breaks down our status into two parts. The one that's local, which is off our fast zero zero, and that's indicates the connection facing the CE and the other half is the pseudo wire itself that's on the right hand side. So you can see it's left and right. As long as we have both of these being up, we know we're in good shape. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a quick look at our packet capture. And you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here. So let me do a apply quick filter and just look for anything that's related to R1 loopback zero since we have our targeted LDP source that the loopback. So let's apply that. And you can see right here, targeted LDP starts off with a UDP hello message. You can see this is before we complete the configuration R2. So R1 has already been completed as far as configuration as keep probing for R2. And if you look at the transport protocol, it's a UDP with the port 646 for both source and destination. And in there is just the LDP hello message. Okay, so it keeps probing the peer. And finally, when we completed the configuration on R2, you can see right here, R2 send back hellos. And then it started to go through the TCP handshake with send, send act, and act. And then it goes through initializations. You can see the initialization messages with keep alive. But what we really want to look at is the address message label. And again, if you look at the TCP header, these are using the destination port of 646, although the source is the ephemeral port. And see label space is zero. I believe that indicates a per platform. And if you look all the way, instead of kind of go through each of these label mapping, since I know that what we're looking for is at the last label mapping message right here at the bottom, kind of drill down into this a little bit, you will see that under the FEC element right here, we have our VC ID of 100, which is what we configured. We have the control word set by default, and there's also a flag that indicates the virtual circuit type is Ethernet, which is type 5. Okay, and then if you keep going with the label TLV, you will see that, and I believe this is coming from R2, so 02 to 01, so R2 communicate across to R1 that the label for that particular virtual circuit is 26, which corresponds to what we saw in our show command. Okay, 26. Okay, we can also look at the response from R1 to R2, which is right here, address message label mapping. So same thing. Let me kind of scroll all the way down to the bottom. Actually, I think it's this message right here, label mapping message. Okay, VCID 100, and this is from R1 to R2. Everything else looks pretty much the same. Since we have the same locally attached circuit type with Ethernet, and then the local label of R125 gets sent across to R2. Okay, so this is what's going on kind of behind the scene with the label exchange as part of the targeted LDP. So now that we have our pseudo wire set up, let's go ahead and do some connectivity tests. So let me kind of of a rerun our Wireshark to capture the data packet. And what we're going to do is just going to ping across from R6 to R7 using those interface IPs. Here's our Wireshark running. So now we hop over to R6, do a ping to 67.7. Okay, so as always, the first ping will fail because of the ARP, and then the subsequent ping succeeded. Once the R pass completed, and we can see a bunch of requests and reply here for ICMP. So let me stop that one more time. And let's take a look. See if we can find right here. This is the R packets coming from R6 to R7, I believe. Okay, so who has 67.7? This is coming from 67.6. So we're going from left to right, right here, and we have two MPLS labels. So the top label is 19 as we kind of figured out already when we do the show command right there, 19. And then the bottom label is 26 as expected. The control word 
Right now it only contains a sequence number of zero. That means it's not really enabled with the sequencing. And just right after the control word is a regular Ethernet header. So this is the start of the original packet that got encapsulated. And the content on this particular packet is the ARP request. Okay, and then we have our ARP reply that goes from right to left. And this one only contains one MPLS label, and that's because it's we're looking at the last hop here. So the top label has already been removed because of the PHP. And again, control word and regular Ethernet header, followed by our ARP reply. Okay, looking at the ping request, we still have the same sets of label stacks, control words. And after that is our regular Ethernet frame. And also since as far as R6 and R7s are concerned, they're connected with a layer 2 medium. So if you do a show CDP neighbor, you can see that R6 is actually seeing R7 as its neighbor. Okay, I don't think we really capture the CDP packets. But if you were to kind of wait long enough, you would see that the CDP packets actually come across the pseudo Y as well. Oh, actually it's right here, right? With the CDP um, as far as the protocols. And this is... Uh, no, that's actually coming from R3 to R1, so that's actually different. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can find a CDP packet for you so you can actually see. So let me kind of rerun the capture real quick, and hopefully we wait long enough this time to capture that. Okay, I think I just saw that flew by. So right here, CDP, this time the device ID is R6, so we know it's coming from R6 going to R7 with the two MPS label, and then the content of that is the CDP packet. Okay, so anything that comes after the Ethernet header will get sent across the pseudo wire. And that should complete our first scenario.